Hello televiewers, uh, good evening and welcome to this edition of Prime Hour uh, on My Media Prime. This evening we are going to be looking at uh, the historic uh, meeting between former President Laurent Babu and current uh, President of the Ivory Coast, uh, uh, Watara, that took place yesterday, uh, described by many quarters uh, pol uh, policy uh, makers, um, uh, political scientists as a uh, very historic and uh, a lesson giving a meeting uh, uh, between African um, statesmen and now we are going to be discussing that this evening uh, it's not it's not the first many persons are quick uh, to refer back to what happened in uh, Kenya and equally in Cameroon when uh, the president of the Republic uh, president Paul Bia received a uh, Nijon Frunzi but we are going to be looking at uh, similar cases to uh, see whether it is uh, the best way forward uh, for Africa, seeing African sons and daughters uh, ready to forgive each other, tolerate each other, and uh, chart a way forward for their nations. Because if we were to quote uh, President uh, Laurent Gbagbo, I'm talking about former president of the Ivory Coast, he said whatever he was doing or he did yesterday is because he wanted to see the people of the Ivory Coast uh, reconciled and uh, chat a common future together he did not do it for himself and uh, we are going to be discussing that we are discussing this with our panelists uh, who are in the house already dr nick Nguanyam is in the house he is a social entrepreneur he is a politician and an educationist par excellence good evening and welcome uh, thank you very much uh, listeners and good evening Liu. Um, I think this is one of the most important topics that we are ever going to discuss in this house because we'll be learning some great lessons and laying our own foundation for our own dialogue in Cameroon, reconciliation and unity that is on the way. So we need to learn the lessons so that we realize that we've been doing the wrong things and get on the right path. Thank you. Okay. We're also in the company of our consultant, uh, Apostle Ambi Valentine Hua. We're glad to have you. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening, my co-panelists. Good evening, Cameroonians and viewers of Prime Hour. Today we are discussing Cote d'Ivoire and other issues concerning Cameroon. We are very, very excited because uh, it's like some kind of a, a wind a wind that is blowing across the continent of Africa and we believe it will not bypass our nation. This reconciliation wind that is taking place all over the continent of Africa, Cameroon will not be an exemption. Thank you. Professor Mark Antony is a Pan-Africanist uh, who has been uh, following up what is happening in Cote d'Ivoire. We're glad to have him with us uh, this evening. Uh, we, good evening and welcome. And we also want to use this opportunity to uh, uh, express our deepest sympathy uh, to you for the loss of your sister. Uh, you just came back from burying her. And uh, we pray for the repose of our soul. Thank you, Mr. Liu, and uh, thank you to all Cameroonians who were fully, uh, in one way or the other, involved in wishing her a better rest. And I want to say good evening to my fellow panelists and to all uh, Prime Hour <coughs> viewers. It has been a while. I am struggling to pick up because I will tell you <laughs> it's not been easy. It's not been easy. Mm. And uh, I believe that uh, this particular topic we are discussing is exactly what we expect to see, not only in Cameroon, but across most of our African nations. We are a people who are supposed to live a life of peace and learn how to receive one another. <clears throat> I want to say that uh, pre former President Bagbo and present president of Ivory Coast, uh, Watara have actually taken a step which should be a lesson for most uh, uh, ruling presidents and I don't know former rebels or whatever I might call them. It is necessary that uh, this become a lesson. Okay, we also in the company of uh, Robert Maleng Fe, uh, Kedia is representing the CPDM on this uh, platform. Good evening, and welcome. Good evening to you. Uh, greetings to my co-panelists. Greetings to all Cameroonian, especially uh, the head of state that is out of the country with his beautiful mate, his wife, as they are having their brief stay uh, 
uh, in Europe. And I would also like to extend my greetings to Honorable Ngala Jira that has, uh, that has been sent by God to free the people of Nkambe from the shackles of uh, the Ambazonians that are destabilizing that part of uh, Cameroon. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Is it not great me to I started with you. I said greetings to you and to my co-panelists. <laughs> You, you described, you, you gave adjectives to everybody, but you did not give me any adjectives. <laughs> no, you're already looking good. The viewers are looking, you're looking good. Chai! Uh, when I looked at you, I thought I was seeing frown beer. You are looking good fresh. Chai! <laughs> good evening, Robert. We're glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> what is this songbird? <laughs> Dr. Yes. <laughs> Ningwanya. Um, let's uh, get to serious business. Did you see what is happening in Ivory Coast happening? Because when it was announced that um, Lurang Babu was coming to Ivory Coast, many persons were already projecting to uh, to witnessing a very tense atmosphere. atmosphere between two rivals. Yes, actually, when. Uh, when I first learned that Bagbo was coming back to Ivory Coast, I, I, I had a lot of fear in me. Mm. And I thought that he was going to, to resurrect some wounds again, and uh, I wasn't happy with what I was going to see. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked about it on, on, a, on a sister television, and I was hoping and praying that Bagbo should just stay where he is and not uh, stay, the, uh, stay the pond again and create problems. And even before I got to to, to the studio this evening up until this afternoon, I had some preconceived um, I had some preconceived ideas about what was happening in Ivory Coast, Watara, and then Gagbo and so on. But I got this article which I shared. I'm sure you also read mm -hmm. from Timothy, who is a, a diplomat who, who 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 was in Ivory Coast after at, the, at that time and he wrote this piece he's a Cameroonian actually and he wrote that piece which uh, gave me an insight into the happenings in Ivory Coast and how we should be reading what we are seeing and from that his article four names stand out and those four people are responsible for the war in Ivory Coast number one is that uh, I know that uh, Apostle Apostle Mambe is here but I'm not very good at history but he can help me polish it up because we need this background to be able to understand Four people were, in, in, were involved in that war. You had the general, he's called General Gay. Yeah, okay. Gay. Yes. No, general Gay. General, general Gay. Gay. He died. He's no longer yes. living. Yeah. He, 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 the one who organized the presidential elections, and I think he was taking part in the elections. Then uh, he was running with Bagbo. Then somewhere at about midday, Bagbo was kind of like winning. Then he started what we are, what we like to do in Africa. He wanted to stop the elections and create problems. And the Ivorian population rose against him, and that led to his death. So Bagbo, uh, Bagbo became the president, and he was there for ten years. Then uh, Bagbo also organized the elections, and uh, Ouattara, who was in France, was was um, participated in those elections and uh, something similar also started to happen and probably Bagbo would have accepted the results as they were but his wife Simone his wife Simone having tested power you know caused the intoxication and wanted a fight and you see we are t it's, it's very important to understand this Jezebel spirit in Simone that started the fight and you've got to be very, very careful with women who, who taste power. And at the end of the day, we send a lot of people to, to death for their own ego. And because of that now, the fight broke out there. And they, f they fought, they killed many people. And Bagbo ended up a prisoner. And he comes back now in his old age. And he realizes that it was a huge mistake. A lot of blood has been spilled, so much has been lost, and so on. And that is why, that is the reason why when he, when he comes, 
he, he, he divorces with his wife, Simone. And it's interesting to know that Bagbo had two wives, one from the north. I don't know if Bagbo himself is from the south or from the it's north. He's from, yeah. from the south. So Bagbo is from the south, and he has this other woman with him who is from the north. I don't know where Simone is from, but he divorced Simone on principle. And that is just something I wanted us to pay attention to, to realize that wars don't usually start in a crowd. Wars always start, you know, it's one or two people who, who, who have the evil spirit, and they will create these wars. And that's why we ought to be very careful what we tell each other. And especially if you're in power, be very careful with your wife. You will see that most SDOs are not very good, and most of the time the problems are caused by their wives. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, did you see this coming, Apostle Ambe? If uh, a prophet had told you that these two guys are uh, going to be meeting yesterday to ease the tensions amongst them? Mr. Lowe, there are no permanent friends or enemies in politics. Mm. Uh, I wrote once, I said, what we practice in Africa is not politics, it's blackmail, backbiting, bigotry. We have produced more enemies than rivals. In the political terrain, we are supposed to have rivals and not enemies. Uh, seeing Bagbo and uh, Lassan Drama Watara reconciling today, it's a mystery. It's a, actually a mystery. Because if we want to put uh, the results of what happened in 2011, almost 3,000 persons died which Babu refused to accept defeat or to concede defeat in the elections, which were all manipulated by France, and uh, Babu was arrested by the French army, handed over to the Ivorian army, and sent to the ICC, with his youth affair minister, Chable Goudé, were locked up in Hague in Holland, and he spent almost 10 years there, and for the past 10 years he's been there, four count charges were leveled against him. First. Um, human right abuse, secondly, rape, death persecution, and uh, they fought. When they went to the International Criminal Court, they realized that all the charges were dropped because none of them uh, was he guilty of. And uh, spending time in Europe, for my experience and what I've studied so far, as far as African affairs are concerned with these imperialists, Bagbo has gone through what Mandela went through. Steve Bikoban to set in a Durban prison in 1977. He said, Appetite is a weapon that can only keep you alive if you allow it to exist. That is to say, Mandela could only survive because he permitted appetite. His Steve Dikobantu was killed because he did not tolerate appetite. So it's to let you understand that if Babu is coming back to Ivory Coast, Babu must have been cooked, brainwashed, sanctified and sanitized by the French people. So the Babu that left the shores of Africa some 10 years ago. It's not a Babu we have right now. And for us to be convinced that Babu and Watara are two different persons is an error of monumental proportion. Those are two persons with different faces, the same person with different faces. They have the same ideology. Don't be surprised that Babu has come back to take power. It's the same thing that happened in Central African Republic when David Dako lost power to, um, uh, to this funny guy, Bukasa. Bukasa. He was taken to France and kept there for some years. They brainwashed him and sent him back, and then he took power again. <laughs> so Babo has come back to take <laughs> what he lost after he had been brainwashed by the French people. How can France then cover Babo's return with an helicopter into Côte d'Ivoire? That speaks volumes. So we should not see that Babo we are seeing there as a Babo that left the shores of this country. Reconciling water means he has already struck some deals. My cry is the innocent masses who follow these big politicians lost their lives. The individuals that died in 2011, 3,000 persons died because of Babo and Watara. Here today, Babo and Watara are, are, they are living their lives. Mm living their lives so we are telling african youth that stop following these gong head politicians who will deceive you go and lose your life three thousand youth died in 2011 bagbo is 76 years old batara is 79 years old some of those children died at 18 22 and now today they are reconciling or reconciliation reconciliation to maintain the group of imperialism in the same Cote d'Ivoire. so i think uh, what is happening here is is more of a drama than a reconciliation <laughs> What do you mean by it? it's a drama? Yes, your, your first take of when you uh, saw the pictures coming out of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. I am actually happy seeing that something like that can happen. Mm. And uh, I want to say that it is a lesson that should be given to many. But you know, it's just like uh, Apostle Ambe made an anal analysis before we came, sat on this spot. I was mentioning something that this, I'm seeing history repeating itself. Mm. What happened some years back in South Africa where Mandela went to prison, made 27 years, because he was fighting an apartheid system. 
he came back and was triumphantly received by the same persons whom he was fighting against and given power he simply meant he accepted the system and today we are seeing uh, the same thing happening in Ivory Coast where Magbo was fighting against imperialism was picked out of Africa carried to the West imprisoned without any charges in fact they, though they presented four charges they themselves dropped the charges proving that there were actually no charges then he is sent out of the Hague to Belgium to go and stay there for at least I think it was almost a year or two that he spent there then he chooses to come back to his country he is triumphantly received in his country then yesterday we saw them actually reconciling what I actually listened from uh, uh, what Bagbo was saying when I listened to him I heard him actually made mention that he was the head and so he expect that those persons whom were locked up was still in prison because of him should be released that actually made it made sense to me I was happy about that if the president can react to that particular uh, 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 I think uh, proposition that will be something of good that will come out of this uh, uh, should I say uh, drama that we are seeing that is unfolding and if that is done you see I was listening to the to to back but the way he was speaking he was speaking with a lot of confidence he was speaking like he is still the president and he even called the president by his name uh Watara then before he later on say oh because you excuse me uh president Watara yeah but uh, that, uh president Watara also says you see content that to see avec Mon petit frère. It, him, yeah. it is they, was, it, was so they claim they him. had been long time friends <laughs> before even <laughs> having a problem which they had so mm -hmm. their friendship goes beyond the war that they had among themselves mm -hmm. uh, we 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 are of the arm of the opinion that we should pick the lessons that need to be picked out of this but those who are standing to fight against imperialism should do it with their heart they should stop manipulating africans because when we see all this some people believe that in order to excel you necessarily need to work with the west in order to make it but those are lessons that will destroy our very continent so the only thing i can pick out of this issue is the fact that they choose to reconcile that reconciliation which they claim that is for the purpose of Ivorians if it is for the purpose of Ivorians to actually move them forward rather than for their ego then it will be good but as long as we already know most of these guys they are not working for the people they almost are always working for themselves so I wish that this one can be different that's what I can say Mr. Liu concerning this I wish it should be different they should be fighting for the people if it is a reconciliation for the nation and for the people then it will be a good reconciliation but if it's a reconciliation for power purpose then I am of the opinion that uh, Bagbo would have better remain in Europe but now that he has his back and we have experienced this wonderful reconciliation in quotes i don't know i don't know how uh, i don't know how kedia uh, sees this uh, do you see it from the perspective why must we be pessimistic about uh, something is this not uh, something that should give africans a uh, hope and uh, some some form of celebration we saw what happened in kenya and uh, why 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 are we pessimistic sorry uh, maybe my own stand may be worse which you are not expecting Talking about these two uh, leaders, yes, they have come to discuss peace. It's something good. But uh, it was not like a peaceful discussion, but they were negotiating. Because when a leader says that the last 2011, I was the leader of the film, and I'm out today, and those that are in prison are supposed to be free, he's indirectly telling the other partner that, okay, fine, we are discussing peace. The first step for peace is to release those that have been in, in prison. That's what he's saying. 
Now, we should be very honest when we are analyzing these two things. Who need peace among the two of them? Is it Bagbo or is it Watara? For me, I believe that is Watara that need peace more than even the Bagbo. Why do I say so? 3,000 people have been killed during the 2011 crisis. And um, Bagbo was taken to the International Criminal Court and he was set free that he's innocent. The question now I ask as a political analyst, who is guilty? That is the question. Who is guilty? And so maybe the guilty person is struggling to bring peace in Ivory Coast, which is something that I appreciate. Everyone like peace when we talk about peace is something good. Now when you realize what happened in 2011, you realize that Guillaume Soro, Gun Kulebali, Ahmed Bakayoko, those are people that shift and supported uh, Ouattara. And Bagbo State alone with uh, Shao Blegudi. Now you realize that in their party, the Democratic Party, which uh, today Henry Kunan Benge still remains the, the, the chairman of the party where Ouattara is the candidate, you realize that the only person that Ouattara has today is the chairman of his party, Henry, which has even fallen with him. Guillaume Soro is out of the game. He is out. Uh, 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 Charles Blegoude is with Bagbo. Kun uh, uh, Kulebali is of late. Those are the supporters that Watara had. You have, uh, uh, yes, you have Mohamed Bakayoko. He is of late. Those are the supporters Watara had. So Watara is alone now. His strong supporters are dead. Uh, Guillaume Soro, that is a rebel we all know, has turned his back against him. He is out. So he actually needs the peace. Because the people of Ivory Coast, they are welcoming peace. But they will still ask, what happened to the 3,000 people that died? Who is guilty? So that's the question. So we know that Watara is the one that wants peace and he should actually bring the peace because uh, Bagbo has given him a handshake and he has asked that he was a leader of the, of the film that took place in 2011. If he's out, his followers are supposed to be out. I will beg that uh, Watara should follow the full step of the peace uh, 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 plan that has been given to him by Bagbo that he should release his followers. I believe if he does that, then that will be appeasing the people while they go ahead to bring peace because these are two people two different ideology one is a democrat and one belongs to another from popular the Ivoirian. so they have their own ideology and their own stand with regards to democracy so we expect that now that they are throwing they are, they are forgetting about their party line the one piece i think that watara should release those that are in prison because it is said that Bagbo is free so all those in prison should be free and uh, for um Child Blegude that have been struggling to have his passport too, we still think that for a good step for peace, as he uh, granted amnesty to uh, uh, Bagbo, who was already sentenced 20 years in prison, he should also grant the same uh, amnesty to Blegude that is coming back and follow the advice of Bagbo, that he should grant peace to all those that are in exile so that they can come back and build their nation. I think if he does that, then peace will actually uh, come back to Ivory Coast. It's not about people meeting, shaking hands, looking at the screen. No, it's about working for peace. It's about working for peace. Uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, we are in Africa, yeah, and, uh, a continent that is split by conflict at uh, different levels. Most uh, majority of the of our countries are uh, in conflict. Uh, what are the lessons how sincere is what is happening in uh, the Ivory Coast? And um, what can we deduce from there? to implement in other countries. We see that uh, the Central African Republic is on shaky ground, Cameroon or so, and many others. What can we take out of that? That's right. Um, every country has got its own share of problems, mm. and uh, if you think through very carefully, you see where the shoe pinches. It might, in the, 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 the problems might have different colors, but underneath they are the same things. They are the same issues that are pulling strings. So, if we probably go from Cameroon and look at what is happening in Cameroon because we live what, what we live it day to day, then we can extrapolate that to all the other countries and you see that it's the same. If you come to Cameroon, for instance, and find out what is the problem, what is the problem in Cameroon? If we were to, of course, we'll enter into the details, the problems of Cameroon on our fingertips again, there's the Anglophone problem, there is the youth problem, because whether youths, whether they are from the north, south, east, or whatever, they are the youth problems. And Kedia can tell us a lot about those youth problems because he's a youth and I know what difficulties he's going through. All the youths to go through the same problems like him and it's very painful. Uh, like me, it's very painful. Yeah. 
except that uh, sometimes you know i don't know i would speak the truth about that but youths are going to a lot of trouble now then our agriculture is bad our economics is bad our politics is bad just so many things are not good and when we want to start trying to see where the problems are and to correct those we want to correct them and be as good as the other nations that we run to and I think I have said it on me on this platform many times and, and other platforms that the way countries function even families or communities function it's like a wheel something it's, it's like a circular plate you can draw it and create three sectors in one sector is politics the other sector is economics and the third sector is development and then what spins the wheel round is the quality of education now when you go through all these african countries with problems it doesn't matter how they look on the outside the politics is bad the economics is limping the youth don't i mean people don't have money in their pockets and they cannot pay for their goods and services the youth have no future then that's what we've said the, the, the politics is bad the economics is bad and added to that economics the agriculture whatever is it's, it's primitive then there's the development bad roads bad communication bad housing whatever and when you go to look at it very carefully especially in the in, in, in the francophone countries the education the education is very bad it's devoid of technology and we are going to be able to have to correct all these things so that our countries can surface now what is happening is in all these countries the cake the cake is small the cake is small and those that are in power and are privileged they go for the cake and the masses have nothing and to solve the problems we need to bake more cakes for everybody that's the bottom line we need to bake more cakes for everybody so that the children of the poor can also eat cakes but when the cakes are reserved only for the privileged there will always be violence that is the problem and i know that we are going to start to solve our own problems in cameroon the lessons we are learning from here is not even a lesson it's principles if you want to argue with me do whatever you want but there is no war on earth that has ever ended without some negotiation or some dialogue somewhere you could go like the americans they, bo they, they bombed uh, hiroshima in japan but i'm sure after that they had to, to have to have some talks with the japanese so that the anger can pipe down whether you have defeated somebody or not you have to dialogue and therefore cameroon should not think that she is a special in one way or the other cameroon must dialogue and the dialogues in Cameroon, like I said, there are five dialogues. Don't lump in things like we, we, we lump in things during the major national dialogue and everything collapsed. You have to be able to define the dialogue and the problem that you want to solve. And I'm telling you, Cameroon needs five different dialogues dealing with different topics. And then after the dialogue, there's reconciliation, there's unity, and everything must be championed by those experts who are, who, who are used to resolving conflict and we have a couple of them in our universities we have uh, professor christophe and so we have dr wilbrod zingwa those are the kind of people that should lead us to, to do our thing while the politicians are only there to listen to them when politicians take over the microphone and try to solve the problems themselves they become very deceitful and that's why the major national dialogue did not succeed and we have to we will be getting a dialogue and it must be done according to principles by experts Apostle Ambe Valentin Ngoa, when you watch a both men, a statement of Coach uh, Wamit, it's true. Many persons think that um, it was a good idea. How sincere uh, could that meeting have been? Uh, how easy would um, the former President Babu forgive uh, current President Watara? How do we even understand what's happening? Lots of um, un untold stories here. Yes, like I said, a lot of shady deeds are involved with this reconciliation, <laughs> whether you accept it or not. I'm talking as a political analyst. Uh, there is a case of Morgan Van Girai with Robert Mugabe, who had a clash in the county of Zimbabwe. Yes. 
and uh, Jean Ping was the AU president by then, and he selected uh, Tung for Nico Hale Barista to go and mediate peace in Zimbabwe. Tung for Nico Hale went to Zimbabwe, met Morgan Van Girai on his, uh, he was lodging at the Turkish embassy. He met him and they spoke together. When they spoke, he left and met Mugabe. They spoke Mugabe together, and then he told them that the only way to broker peace in this country is for people to share power. And when they shared power, that was the procedure put in place. I want to find out who stood as an intermediary between two act enemies, rivals, people who don't want to see themselves cut and rat. Who stood in between these two persons to bring them together? Maybe there were some, some backdoor negotiations. Backdoor negotiations were, Mr. Liu, because we have seen cases in this Africa where people have gone through difficulties. That in, in South Africa, the case of Mandela, we saw what happened. The British people went to uh, Robben Island, brought back Mandela. There was no intermediary. We have seen genuine cases being resolved in this Africa when somebody came as a peace broker. The case of Sudan, Rick Mashar came with Sava Key. There was a broker in the middle. Who is a broker between Alassane Draman Ouattara and Olang Babu? There is no broker. A man was taken and intimidated as they do always to all their captives. They water down your philosophy and drain the energy that is in you. They instill in you their philosophy and then send you back. I have told you on many instances, there is a case of Jean Bendel Bokassa, the, the cousin of David Daco, who was used to bring down David Daco, and then David Daco was taken back to France, educated, redrilled again, sent back to Central African Republic to conquer Bokassa. He conquered Bokassa and then took over power. That's the first instance. There's a case of Mandela. He was kept in prison for 27 years at the Robben Island. After that, they brought him back to stand as a political liberator, not an economic liberator. That's the reason why Malema is still fighting for economic freedom fighters today in Africa, in South Africa. Steve Biko Bantu, born for 18 of April, 18 June 1946, in the KwaZulu Nata area, came up and started fighting against this very apartheid. He was arrested and he stood his ground until he was killed. The last statement he made that I made, he said, apartheid is a weapon. It can only keep you alive when you accept it. It means before Mandela came out of prison, they had negotiated. I'm giving you back this case of Bagoye. The 10 years in Hick were years of a total reprogramming. I'm telling you, the hard drive of Babo has been rewired. New information has been stored into this hard drive. They are sending him back to come and maintain the imperialist position. Do you know that Babo is still sitting on the balance? There is a bank in the West region of Africa. It's called Beseao, which is Bank Central de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. He is accused of embezzling. 20 billion from that bank and the charges are still on his head which means what i can decide like anything on babo's head <laughs> so babo has come back to the country because like babo is the person that understands grassroots politics and babo is the people's choice and La I ivory coast can never have peace as long as babo is in captivity that country was still standing on a balance. So they have sent babo back to come to the country let the people have peace that's the reason why they return of babo was like a triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And it was France then cats that sent their helicopter and their cameramen to cover it. Well, France, okay. well, France then cats cannot cover Babo if they are not with Babo. Now Babo was the person that denied the exportation of cocoa to France, refusing France to stand as an intermediary by selling the Ivory Coast cocoa. That was the reason why they had to bring him down. When did Babo suddenly become a partner of French government until they are sending their channel to come and drop him back Apostle into Côte d'Ivoire. Yes, Mr. Liu. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul in the Bible was not originally a good man. Now. Of course. God transformed him. Of course. There's a transformation that comes from the heart. What, what says that in prison? that comes from torture. Apostle, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this transformation is born out of torture. Paul it's not the, the Holy Spirit tortured. conviction. Paul was tortured. He lost his Paul answer. was convicted by the Holy Spirit through divine encounter. This man was tortured in Hague in Holland. <laughs> <laughs> tortured in Hague in Holland. And then the worst of it is that he was living in Belgium and then they refused to give his passport. <laughs> After they have dropped the charges. Now, the charges that were levied against him that he, he was guiltless of, what are the remunerations? Uh, what are the payments? Apostle. Yes, Mr. Lee. This man says that what I'm doing 
is because I love my people. I want reconciliation. Why don't you believe even what he says? Mr. Leo, because history has taught us mm. that when these guys catch you, <laughs> by the time they are done with you, your language will change. <laughs> 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 we are here to analyze now. We are just being <laughs> sincere. <laughs> this thing is how do I put it? Let's 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 pray it's true. Let's let <laughs> let us live in the place of prayer now. Let's live in the place of prayer. Let's pray this. Let's <laughs> let's cut real. There is this also a lesson, uh, Professor Mark Anthony? You are a Pan-Africanist to Africans that uh, we can solve our problems because he keep he has been asking who was the intermediary. intermediary. And if there is noon, can we also say that Africans, if they have the will and, and uh, pushful, they can sort themselves out? Mr. Liu, like I earlier said, it is uh, very important to know what to pick from any situation in which you find yourself in. For example, we are seeing Bagbo coming back and being received by the president. Uh, we can't actually see any intermediary. Yes, that's not a problem. We saw them talking about reconciliation. That is a good uh, issue. The question is, is it genuine? Because that's what we are supposed to be looking at. Mm -hmm. It's not even the issue of uh, whether they are reconciling. If reconciliation, the way they did it, I love it. I want that everybody should copy okay. this kind I'm of thing. About, I'm, I'm talking about the lessons. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I would love until you enter their hearts, you know whether they are genuine or not. I would love but the that. fact that they could sit, sit together yes. is something that I wish that every politician in Africa could learn and maybe take as a lesson. Okay, mm -hmm. We could sit down after our problems and deal with our issues. After all, we are brothers. If that can be a lesson from this, then it's good. Uh, we, 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 we will not go without questioning the fact that, Leo, how long is it going to last? Those are some of the things we, because what will cause it to become an effective lesson will be how long it's going to last. If this particular reconciliation or talks that they have started actually last and we see results, like uh, uh, Bagbo asks for something indirectly, I was the head and my being taken to prison led to others going to prison. Can we can, can, can we can we sincerely sit on this table and think that no negotiation went on and that uh, Babo just uh, was accepted? No, it's not possible. The, so, the, before before even Babo came to Ivory Coast, mm. there had been there back surely talks. some guarantees. There had been back talks, mm. and those back talks are the result of what you are seeing today. It's not just something that just happened. It didn't just happen. I remember those uh, the prime minister himself had been trying to do some talks from behind. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, we will also want to look at the whole issue and say that even though there is no practical individual we can see in front that is showing that uh, somebody negotiated from everything, let's even say nobody is going to negotiate from everything. That should be a lesson. Mm -hmm. Can we sit like this and after having gotten a lot of problem we come together Many have died you've done wrong wrong yeah. then we come back and say okay let's talk the two of us if they can do that then that is powerful if they can do that kind of thing i want to pray that every african leader should mm. learn that but Leo, i am of that opinion that this thing mm. is uh might be somebody's being forced to do something mm. and doing it might be for the sake of another person okay um, so I, I don't want to uh, just accept the situation but i wish that it could be true that's uh, just what robert, i robert robert uh why do we think that africans themselves cannot uh, think uh, in the interest of their population why must we think that someone has forced our african uh, fathers, because the African fathers would have elected or not to engage in what uh, they are doing. Don't you think that this is also a lesson of tolerance and forgiveness uh, in the interest of the people of Ivory Coast? Uh, Ivory Coast has uh, has suffered a lot, a lot. Yes, human, human, human uh, persons, uh, human human beings were killed in their numbers, property were destroyed. Why don't you think that 
Africans themselves can see uh, the need to do politics differently. You see, uh, since we are talking about Africa, Africa is a continent that they know their problem. Mm. They know their solution. But they are always having problem in implementing the solution of their own problem. Uh, to talk about these two people, you see, it, 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 the, the two people at the head, break to unite is not only about those two people. It is who those people are leading. Are they bringing the people they are leading together to bring peace? That is, that what, is, that is what Mago said. That that is, I'm doing this not for myself, but for the people. But for the people. Now, you realize that um, Watara who come from the Democratic Party. We should know that the Democratic Party has been the one ruling from 1960 to 1999. After what happened? Before Babo took power with the popular front of Ivory Coast. And after his rule, it has gone back to the Democratic uh, 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 Party, which is uh, there led by um, Ouattara as president and uh, Kunan Bindi as the chairman. Now you realize that we are talking about two opposition parties with their own ideology. Now you realize that the coming back of Bagbo in his own party, which many people will not come out to say it openly, we know the problem going on in the division in their own party. His wife has his own personal stand. And that's why they almost had the problem of divorcing, even though they didn't come out to say it clearly. You have Kunan Bedier. He's also there. He wants to come back to the country. He's, uh, he has asked for his passport. Oh, is, Kuna Bidia is in the country? Uh, um, he, oh, he already come back, already get talking of, of, of another person, Guillaume Soro. Uh, yeah, it's Guillaume Soro, mm -hmm. Guillaume Soro, which we all know. These other people, these are fractions. And we know the influence of Guillaume Soro in the Ivorian military, which we must confess. His influence in the Ivorian military is there. Everybody knows how he has been a rebel. They don't hide it. So he's needed to come back and bring peace. That is why Babo mm -hmm. said that. He's greeting him for peace, but he will want him, one, to release all those that are in prison because of him. Two, all those that are out of the country, when we say out of the country, we also mean Guillaume Soro, the rebel leader. Like some people are asking for the release of people in Cameroon. Pardon. <laughs> I could have even loved that some people in Cameroon could have been going on radio, TV station to say release uh, uh, Seseko Ayoktabi. But they don't even do that. They are there shouting that the government must discuss with uh, uh, Chris Anu and the rest with the other guy in uh, Norway. What's that his name? Um, <laughs> ah, yeah, but they are saying that they should discuss. They are not talking about uh, the man in prison. They are talking about those in the diaspora, insisting that the government must discover them. We don't know the Babo agenda and what they want. Babo so we will come diaspora. for that of Cameroon later. But now let us talk about uh, that of Bagbo. What is important is that they have come. They have discussed for peace. Now it is meant for them as two leaders to bridge the peace between their two followers because those are the two majority political parties that if they bring peace and unite these two people, then actually there will be peace. But people are still uh, wounded. So let the healing process go ahead. And the person to do the healing process is Watara. Watara, one, he's supposed to release all those in prison, as Babo said, to all those in the diaspora and he has to do this very very fast to uh, uh, to to consolidate this peace very fast because if he does not do it and leave power the ivorian people will ask that those three thousand people that died if the court said babo is innocent then who is guilty and they may not judge him now they have not heard his own sight of uh, uh, what happened because he's the president and he's still in power so if he does not consolidate peace very fast when he will leave power they will definitely ask him because justice needs to rule uh, to, to to take its course so he should consolidate peace very fast and collaborate with Bagbo. i think if that is done then ivorians will actually have the real peace what should follow after this uh, meeting of yesterday in ivory coast <clears throat> I don't really know. I wish I, I, I wish I had asked our experts, the conflict resolution experts. <laughs> they are highly <laughs> available. <laughs> yes, highly it, available. You call them, they will not come. This, this, this. this the, the, we are entering the technical phase now, where something has to be happening. Mm. Those were just declarations, mm -hmm. and you know. 
um, there must be some action on the ground that accompanies these declarations. You remember when uh, when the chairman John Fundi had that uh, meeting that, with that powerful president. handshake with the president? If after that handshake, they had looked at, they had answered this kind of question that you are asking, mm -hmm. we will not be having a war today. It's because after the handshake, everybody went again and were sleeping, and they continued to do business as usual, and things continued to deteriorate. So after this handshake, there is something that must be happening to grow the peace, to, 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 to consolidate the peace, to, 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 to solve those problems that I've been talking about, to be solving the political problems. You see, KDI was talking, he mentioned call all sorts of names, all of those are politicians, then to, 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 to solve the economic problems to solve the youth problems, to solve the development problems, because it doesn't matter what happens, the youths must have something to eat. You know, when, when Christ says, uh, Peter, look after my sheep, or give them something to eat, that eat stands for all that we need as human beings to survive. It's food, it's shelter, it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's the ability to get married. It's all those things, to have jobs, all those things. So what are they going to do so that at the end of the day the, all these problems can be solved? Because talking, talking, talking without solving concrete problems is getting us nowhere. And that is the kind of thing too we are going to have in Cameroon. After the talking, you must solve problems, solve the political problems. You know, like, like of course, we'll be coming to the specific problems of Cameroon. You see, these 350 political parties only creating confusion <laughs> and anger. Like, <laughs> they will all die. <laughs> and when they die, then you'll be able to organize the politics. We cannot organize the politics with 350 people making a lot of noise. So they would die then so that you can be able to organize the economics, organize the development, organize the youth, organize the education, and put money into people's pockets. And you must feed the people. Like I said, feeding the people means solve their problems, solve their everyday problems. You can talk politics from morning till evening, sing all the songs, but if you don't solve the problems of the people, if you don't address yourself to their daily needs, if you don't give them hope, you are in trouble. It's okay. How do you know that you are giving your children hope? If they stop going to the U.S. Embassy at 4 a.m., if they stop dying in the Sahara Desert and in the Mediterranean Sea, if those that were outside are so happy to come back and start their own businesses and things and grow, if you stop importing rice, and then you, you are, if, you, if you come to a point where more than 60% on, on, on your supermarket shelves are goods that you have manufactured in your country, you will have peace. Okay. Apostle Lambi Valentine Gua, you are an expert on issues of uh, Africa, uh, politics. Um, what, uh, according to you, you have been pessimistic, eh? I must say, but what should follow this uh, meeting out there in uh, Cote d'Ivoire? Uh, Mr. Lo, all of us pray for the good there. Eh? We are talking about sustainable peace, not yes. just peace, yeah. All of us are praying for the good for every country in Africa that has gone through trials of uh, war and civil wars. You see, we almost had a very delicate situation down there in Kenya, on the Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. Yeah, they came up. They came up. But you see, there was a priest that came in between them, a pastor, brought them to church. They reconciled in the presence of God. My, I, I'm not. I'm not pessimistic. I have a worry with this reconciliation. We saw TV Joshua in South Sudan. In yes, South Sudan, South he Sudan. went there to mm -hmm. negotiate. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking that if at all, this guy came back, they were supposed to have uplifted the charges of the Beseao Bank Central de l'État de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Yeah, but that is West African Bank and not uh, necessarily Ivory Coast. This was one of the charges that they gave away, that, that, what that I gave against Bagbo. Mm. That he embezzled money from that bank. Yeah, from me, that, and is that is too, and the, 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 the charges the have not been lifted. Mm. That is, that's my problem. Now he has come back to Cote d'Ivoire, good and fine. The wife, whom supposedly they are about to divorce, his complaint is that the woman did not bother visiting him when he was in the Hague. It was his girlfriend that stayed in Belgium and visited him in the Hague 
three times a week. Yeah, but we must also acknowledge the fact that she was detained for some time. And we will not know the conditions under which she was living. I'm coming. Yes. Yes. I'm coming. Mm. I'm coming. Mm. I'm coming to that. The peace between Watara and Babo does not bring automatic peace in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, but what should be what should be done to bring sustainable peace? That's my question. That is what I'm trying to get into right now. Okay. When we are done reconciling Ouattara and Gbagbo, we have Gbagbo and his political party to <laughs> settle scores with. Mm -hmm. There is this guy they call Francois Afingesa. Mm -hmm. He's a secretary of the party. He too has cut off the party and taken to his own corner. <laughs> Gbagbo's wife is holding mm -hmm. her stand against the imperialist system in Cote d'Ivoire. And she has a very huge following. She has a huge following. Mm -hmm. The youth of Cote d'Ivoire believe in Guillaume Soro, who also has been kicked out. He traveled abroad on coming back. They gave him an embargo not to enter the country. He stopped betting Accra. And then now he has gone back to Belgium. If you look inside Babo's party, the red division, Simone Babo is standing on the fact that the Babo that left the shores it's of Cote d'Ivoire to hate should be the same Babo that came back. She's still maintaining the stand. The fight should continue. This is exactly what happened to Winnie Madikizela Mandela. Locked up in prison for seven months. The husband, 27 years in prison. When the husband came back, Winnie Madikizela Mandela was standing on the ground that they want complete economic and political independence. Not knowing that the Mandela that came back from Robben Island is not the one that left. <laughs> So Mandela was. Wait, wait, Mr. Lo, are you not sure? Did, did you I, they are giving his life to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this woman wanted this, the same stand. Mandela had come up with another philosophy. So Mandela was forced to divorce her. So Babo is not actually divorcing Simone Babo because of the fact that she didn't visit him in Hague. It's because Simone is still holding on to the same philosophy that both of them held before Babo was arrested. And she has a very huge following in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. Now, let us consider the fact that they have reconciled. Because Watara is from the minority north. And Babo is from the south. Which I play good day. Let us consider the fact that Babo comes back to power. Inside Babo's party, there is going to be chaos inside Cote d'Ivoire. So, Cote d'Ivoire is standing on the balance. Guillaume Soro was the one that joined Alassane Watara to fight against Babo as a warrior. Guillaume Soro entered the rebel gang at the age of 28. He has served twice as National Assembly member and one time Prime Minister in Côte d'Ivoire. Guillaume Soro has his own grudges and there are charges leveled against him by Ouattara. So Ouattara is not in good terms with Guillaume Soro. Simone is not in good terms with Gbagbo. Then Gbagbo is trying to reconcile with Ouattara. And then Kunan Bidye also who has disconnected. There's a lot of mix <laughs> up and zigzagging in the entire system. But it starts from somewhere. At least it these starts two, from these somewhere. Two. These two political rivals have come. Let's accept that they have come to reconcile. Mm. Let's accept from the point of view all of us have seen. They have come to reconcile. But there is one thing I have to let you understand, Mr. Liu. Until Watara will lift up the charges against Babu concerning the regional embezzlement. That's when I will know reconciliation has actually come. You cannot leave a motive. You cannot leave a scar on someone's life and you claim to reconcile with him. Yeah. Secondly, if he goes ahead to free all the prisoners that Babu has requested, then we are going to understand that peace is in process. And right now, Alassane Draman Watara, from where he is standing, he has already violated the constitution of Cote d'Ivoire by going for a third tenure in office which is against the constitution. He has another group of people who are against him. So Cote d'Ivoire is a cake broken in several pieces. It will take a technocrat in peace and conflict management to bundle all these pieces to give the cake its shape. Because besides this thing we are seeing here, there are other strings that are attached to what is happening here. Mm. So I don't see full reconciliation and restoration through this reconciliation between Bagbo and Watara. Uh, but this is something Africans should celebrate, uh, uh, Professor Mark Antony, <laughs> whatever the case, because... Yes. Mr. Leo, we have been said, we see, I've been on that point that we should celebrate. Africans say, Africans should not allow imperialists to, to come between them. Of course. Two brothers have, have said that we want to be together. Now we say there's a problem again. Why do you are looking so, there, Mr. Leo? Mm -hmm. 
it's a lot of technical work that has been done mm -hmm. where an individual who has been completely against imperial rule is completely cut out of his ideologies then i want to say forcefully implanted ideas are in his head which right now he is willing to execute without any uh, force i entered this place and i made mention of something though apostle was saying that is not the same i said history is repeating itself what happened in south africa is about to happen in ivory coast an individual was picked out because of his ideologies he fought against a system he was taken to prison when he was carried to prison he came back the first thing he did he was to deny his wife who was against the person that came from prison i am seeing the same thing happening in ivory coast that is something that I, as, an, as, an, as a Pan-Africanist, I want to say there's something fishy. <laughs> and because I see something fishy, I want to believe that the imperialist is still having his hands struggling to manipulate in order to maintain their position in Africa. Why? Because Africa remains French's strong power in Africa. Okay, since, we should be, since, we should know that. since you guys are so bent uh, not to believe that it may be genuine, no, I, what, what were you no, expecting? Me, no, what were you expecting that Babo comes back and then ignites another fight? No, 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 what, no, 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 uh, uh, Babu to come and say anti-imperialist, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> all those things. Is that what you are expecting? That is not exactly what he should be doing. What he should be doing is present himself like he has done mm -hmm. and look for every means possible to make sure that what has been destroyed be restored. He just made a call that the prisoners who were with him be released. Mm -hmm. That is a good uh, call. Belio, the question is, is this thing going to be effective? Will it be implemented? I have declared that I wish that all Africans can learn how to sit together without any strings attached. They can come like this, solve their problems without anybody coming in between them. That will be good. That is the spirit of Ubuntu, which is what Africans believe in. We believe that we are one another's keeper. It should not be because an individual has been carried to the Hague and brought back. It should be because <laughs> maybe we sat and then we saw that this thing that we are doing is wrong. Who arrested Kenyatta? That is the, that's the, a good question. None of them were arrested. But they came back to reconcile because the, there was a problem that was about to emerge in their country. And look at it. Kenya is progressing. As I said earlier, Ivory Coast is French's strong uh, uh, power in Africa. And if they get to lose that one, then it means uh, France has lost his uh, position in Africa. And so when our man uh, Bagbo stood up and said, okay, we do not want any imperial rule, he was quickly removed because if France lost that nation, it would have, been, it would have ended. But now he can come back and France will use him. Is well equipped to be used by France in order to maintain their rule. So, it, the, the so called reconciliation is a nice one, but I, as an individual, would not want to say that I believe that is going to. So, last. you expected Babo to continue the fight? Like Babo uh, should not continue any fight against Watara, but he should continue his fight against imperialism. Who says he's not, he's not going to fight against imperialism? Why are you so certain? Uh, you had a meeting between the imperialists. You see, Mabo you and see, you see, Leo, let me show you something. Mm -hmm. Somebody is sitting in his house. He's removed from his house, carried to prison, kept there for 10 years, and doctrine. Then, when he is supposed to return, in fact, they have said there's no problem, he is moved to Belgium. In Belgium, he stays there for close to two years without his passport. Then, when they believe that it is time for him. He has accepted everything. They give him his passport and tell him go home. That's what has happened. And now he has come home. 
Finally, what do we want in Africa? What we are simply said, saying is that yeah. Africans must get to the place where we need to be sincere with ourselves. When there is fight, we say we, should, we want peace. Now there is we, peace, we, we say want, we should fight. That is not peace, Mr. Leo. That is I not mean, peace. I believe that is that is a, that Are you the one deciding no. peace in Cote d'Ivoire? You see, this is the thing. <laughs> we, we are struggling to, to speak, and at the same time, we are struggling to fight ourselves. That is not peace, per se. Huh? That is... Uh, you just said that two brothers are, two, are, two brothers are together. You say it is not peace in Cameroon. You just claim that they are together. Who maybe one made you? Is it the camera that they took and the videos that you see that made you to believe that? What should we peace? believe? You or or, or Babu and and mm. Kodi and uh, and Watara? Should you, we believe Babu and Watara or you? Even we Babu, see, uh, you watch with me. and uh, Watara. Did you really see the peace between them? How does it like, uh, <laughs> for, yes. We must get to that place where we, we do not see things from just with our eyes and conclude. But you should, you become, should be able to analyze them. You should become you them. should become God so that you can see their hearts. Because how do we how do we you draw see, conclusion from here? That from what you are so saying, you expect me to take your position mm. and stand for it, but that is not what I'm going to do. Because mm. what I'm, I'm seeing there, I'm a journalist, please. I'm a journalist, and I in journalism, we relate what. The first hand um, information sources tell us where is it Babo and Watara cannot say we are for peace, and you are here to say that is not peace. How, how do we understand this? No, for see, should I believe them, you, okay, Professor Matt, who is here with me, or, or <laughs> Babo, who is talking? You should believe them if they have said that they have peace. As I think that but they talk of saying. no, no, that's not what they said. Okay. That's what you are saying. They said they want to reconcile, they do not say that is peace. But you sow a seed and it grows. What do you mean? Those Good. 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 Now you are talking. <laughs> now you are talking because you, you see you don't conclude did you on follow, something. Did you follow what Babo said. Yes, I did. Babo follow. says, "Le combat continue." Mais ce que je fais, je le fais pour la réconciliation de, du peuple ivoirien. That is what they are saying. You are in the studio with me to say that that is not peace. Ah. Now tell us what should, what should they do to you? Just to, made to mention. You just made mention. Le combat continue. Yeah, because you said yes, because you're fair, you see, to debunk what, to debunk what you are saying, you say he has been indoctrinated, yes. but he makes it clear in front of Watara that what I stood for continues. But the step we are engaging in is in the interest of the people of Ivory Coast, that is what they discussed. But you are here to say that he was, I don't know what lessons, yes. anyway. Uh, for me, I stand on the point that these two leaders have met to talk about peace, and it is something good. And now my own analysis that I've been saying so far are the processes that they need to bring together to ensure that actually the peace they are talking about should be effective. Because peace is not all about two people see, to see meet, together. shake hands in front of the camera, smile and laugh. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah. that in 2010, which we are seeing the video, how Babo met Watara, they shook hands, they laughed, they smile. Now we are seeing it. By the so, videos we saw the major national dialogue. Pardon? We are in Ivory Coast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are saying that as they met their shook hands 10 years ago, mm. and one person had to buy back the other, now they have still met again. Mm -hmm. That one should not happen again. Now they should bring instead people together. That's why I went ahead now to analyze at the level of their political party what is happening in there. Because these are politicians and they, they are being followed by... Uh, they are militant and they are sympathizers of their party. So they need to bring back these people together. That's why I say at the level of the popular front, which the leader there is a Bagbo, he has to bring his own people together. One is his wife happy with his stand he is taking to bring peace, and we know the follower of the wife. Because the wife have I that the next uh, presidential election should be standing for the front popular. The, house has, the wife has eyes there. Then the other young man also that was at the head with, with, with Bagbo, he also has eyes. So is he doing the reconciliation that him, Bagbo, or he's bringing all his followers, the wife and the follower, uh, uh, Charles Blegude and the follower, all those that are in prison. So we are saying that it is something good for them to talk about peace. Then they should make the peace to be progressive. Yeah. So that they should bring the other people together, okay. so that we we'll have the final peace. So they need to be progressive. The, the peace should be so progressive. steps steps uh, should be followed. Yes. I don't know uh, what steps. Um, you are an expert on African political issues. If we because you you, you describe it as a cake, 
That is uh, yeah, broken pieces. Pieces, yes. How do we get this the cake uh, edible by the the Ivorian people? Okay. Uh, beginning with the reconciliation, Watara and uh, Bagbo is a very giant step. Mm. For Bagbo divorcing his wife is another split created. It's, a, it's another fight. Yes. And when they are doing reconciliation, I'm sure everybody should be forgiven. Mm. Guillaume Soro supposed to be brought back to Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. As a member who has served in the General Assembly as a president, he holds a very high following in that country. Mm -hmm. His followers also are quiet somewhere waiting to see how far the government will go with their own man. Because sometimes when you sit on the throne in the country, you are not the only ruler. There are many who are following different leaders in that country, especially political leaders. Mm -hmm. So Guillaume Soro should be brought back. Babo should rethink his decision divorcing with his wife. Either he initiates his wife into his new philosophy. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Or better see, do what Ojuku did in the Aburi Accord in 1970, in Ghana in 1967, where he accepted everything in front of the delegates there, what Gawon said. When he came back to Nigeria, he disrespected everything. Let it be that uh, Babo has respected all the norms and the principles given to him in Europe. But he has come back to Côte d'Ivoire to maintain his stand as a fighter against imperialism and take back his wife. Chablé Goudé was the Minister of Youth Affairs. Also has to give it, they have to give his place. This guy called Konan Bidé, Konan Bidé is 82 years, he's older than Ouattara and older than Babo. Mm -hmm. He's a father. Yeah, yes, the former president that had the first uh, after former, the former Ivorian president. ambassador to, to former um, uh, Ivorian ambassador to Cameroon. Cameroon, yes. Mm -hmm. So now this this guy called um, uh, um, Francois Conan Harry Conan Bidi mm -hmm. has to be given his own place as a as a patriot mm -hmm. that has served the country. Francois Afingesa, who broke who, who break out of Babo's party supposed to be brought also to the table. Mm. I am sure if they are doing that, they should do it in a way that everybody is satisfied. Okay. And then now call for fresh elections. Fair, free and fair elections. So that when somebody is winning, he wins by merit. There is a grudge of those who come from the east and the south from Babo, saying that it was found that manipulated Watara's rise to power. Because Watara is on the minority north. So when this reconciliation is not changed from all angles, mm. it will be like you are trying to roof a house without a wall. Okay. Uh, two minutes. I don't, uh, 30 seconds, if I will. Thank you. Uh, one thing also <laughs> that I want to say, we should be very honest eh, uh, to know that uh, Watara has been a good president. He has moved up the development of Ivory Coast from 3 to 7 percent so he's doing actually a good job uh, yes yes at the level of road construction production and everything so that's something we should appreciate it's but the truth yes, but the true there is that despite that his economic uh, development he has given in that country he's not having the popularity that uh, actually uh, Bagbo is is having so if the two of them are coming up together to reconcile in these various aspects they should bring their followers then there will be effective peace in Ivory Coast Mr. Okay. to add there is a grief of Ivorians when Babo changed the constitution in 2016 under the influence of their second general in their party, Adama Bitogo. Adama Bitogo Watara. influenced Watara to change the constitution to go for a third tenure in office, which is a grief that the Ivorians are still buried. It is underground. So that needs uh, to be It needs to be, be addressed. Okay. Uh, 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 Dr. Nick Nguanyam, when we follow him, uh, uh, he's uh, proposing that there should be something bigger than this this uh, these two uh, persons uh ivory coast needs uh, a, a, a no no a national reconciliation uh, uh, uh conference something that will bring people beyond water and Bagbo. yes um you know like when uh mark was speaking here you know we we're generally screaming at him that that handshake that you are seeing the handshake that we saw today is a seed of peace that has been planted. When you plant that mustard seed and you water it, it will grow and becomes a mighty tree. So everything is a process, and the tree is in the seed. And for this, for the for the seed to become a tree, it has to be watered, it has to be catered for, and so on. And that's what they will have to do. And once they do it and do it well peace will come and will come to stay and that nation is going to progress and therefore 
what they will need to do now beyond all like when 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 when, when apostle ambe was speaking you see he was mentioning the different fragments and fractions that are there that need to be taken care of and it's very difficult to take care of all these fragments and fractions when you are not dealing with experts in conflict resolution when you use just politicians who by nature are very greedy people they always tend to pull the blanket to themselves and would not want to pay attention to principles politicians have a, a cunning way of being untruthful and therefore you need you know they could be Ivorians, of course, if they go to Ivory Coast, they certainly would have people who are specialized in conflict resolution. And those people should be, should, should, should be genuine enough and should sit down and help their country and these, their politicians, to go through the process of healing and go through the process of sharing the cake. But it doesn't matter how much you share the cake because most politicians only use politics as a way of filling their pockets and stealing from the okay. we are coffers. So it's important that while they are solving the political things, they should make their economy to work. Okay. Uh, okay. You want to say just, just to conclude something. One, one see, minute. Yeah. From, from what uh, Dr. Nick just, recon just said here, it's simple. He's simply telling us that as long as politicians remain there, there will be no peace. That's simply what he just said. So... <laughs> He's just mentioning what no, I was that's, saying. That's as long I as said. those politicians are there, no, no, you think, Mr. Uh, Doc, no, no, let, us, let us not no, play no, with I'm words here, when we talk to, to Why are you always using it for people now? It's you not a matter of people. You see, when you talk, when you talk, let us look at ourselves. He says, let experts work on making sure the peace is maintained. Then, he says that as long as it is politicians. Politicians always know how to put a blanket to themselves, which means if you allow it in their hands, there will be no peace. So somebody when you talk like that, then you expect that uh, somebody who is listening to you, you are arguing the same time that there should be peace and there should not be peace. Nice. So that's the same so thing. You see, we, should, we, 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 when we are talking, we should throw the thing and make it open so that people should get it clear. You are not talking <laughs> to people <laughs> like Dr. that. Kids. Is eh? No, doctor no, is embarrassed because he did not realize he was saying that there should not be there no, will not no, be peace. No, 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 no. He's speaking. You are, you are I'm not confused. The words are clear. clear. No, no, they are not politicians. Are politicians will pull the blanket. Please, please, please. I think that I think that what uh, doctor meant is that if uh, allowed to strictly uh, politicians, the things may not work out very well. That's but right. he is proposing that the experts should, should, be, should be brought in so that they can help the politicians bring the, the peace that yeah, we that's need. Exactly that's exactly what we need. Grow the peace. Do yeah. it. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, yes. It's okay yes, yes. from that yes, point. Yes, yes. Well, yes. it's clear. <laughs> you reason for Bagbo, you reason for Watala, you reason for It's not reasoning. <laughs> it is his okay, words. We are taking a short break. When we come back, we are going to our second topic. <laughs> Okay, uh, welcome back. You're watching Prime Art on my media prime. This time around, we are going to be uh, discussing about uh, finding an end to the uh, smoking guns in the southwest and northwest regions. Can, can Cameroonians across our board uh, force our parties uh, to end the smoking of guns? Uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, do you think that Cameroonians, uh, we are talking about across the board, from all 10 regions, civil society, politi politicians have done enough to force uh, both parties to stop the guns from smoking? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'll continue to say what I said before, that we are entering a new phase in our, in our problems in Cameroon. And I said that in Cameroon, we have the five problems on our fingertips. We have the Anglophone problem, which we know very well, and it's a war that's been going on there for five years now. We have a youth problem. We have, uh, we have problems uh, 
we have the, the, the Bamileke problems, there's the Bamileke problems, then there's the Northerners problems, so many other problems. Then we have economic problems, developmental problems, and so on. So in this country, we must start solving the problems, and the solutions are soon coming. Like the other day, I said that when you see the first ministers and first directors locked up in prison because of COVID-19, that is the beginning of the, of the change in Cameroon, and that change is coming very soon. We are going to have a genuine dialogue, which is true. And that genuine dialogue, the first di I said there will be five dialogues in this country. The first dialogue that you will see is the Anglophone government dialogue. That's where, when I say the Anglophone, because the Anglophone would, in, would, would, would involve many groups, those, those in the diaspora, those in Cameroon, the fighters, and the federalists, the confederalists, the, the whatever, the, sep the, the separatists, everybody, that will be the anglophone, they will have to have a talk with the government. And after that talk, peace will begin to come. And the other dialogues that the country must organize will be, there must be a dialogue between the Bamile case and the government, there must be a dialogue between the northerners and the government, a dialogue between the youths and the government, and then after that, all the Cameroonians have to talk to themselves and embrace themselves so that we can move ahead. That is what is going to happen and it would be. So I look forward to peace in this nation and it's going to be as I have said. Thank you. Okay, but uh, you did not answer my question. My what question is whether, whether you uh, Cameroonians across the board have pressed both sides enough to wanting to force an end to the war. No, Mr. Liu. I think uh, it is not the nation or the state it is a few hand a few hand of oh, sorry a few group of persons from the english sector fighting a few group of persons in the government mm -hmm. the entire state is not involved in this mm -hmm. this fight is a fight between a few group of persons mm -hmm. from this government mm -hmm. fighting a few group of persons from the anglophone sector mm -hmm. Now, the entire nation is held at ransom because of these two parties in this country. And I can tell with all sincerity that if all this entire Cameroon decides to stop the problem, it's going to be a flash of light. Mm -hmm. It took 3,000 persons in Ukraine during the Orange Revolution to hold the entire state at ransom. Cameroon has a population of about 26 million people. You cannot tell me that the few military persons we have in this huge population and the few amber boys and girls and the diaspora put together are the ones who have had at least 20 million people are ransom. If these 20 million persons select only 5 million and send to the north and the southwest to block the streets completely, all the roads, no movement, nothing i am sure the both parties will be left with no choice than to come to a table of discussion it is because the masses from the 10 different regions when i keep here people saying that the masses from the anglophone region have no reason where are the masses most of them are refugees some internally displaced many are dead many have flown out of the country a few persons are in some few villages but if at all this entire nation considers itself to be one then I'm sure it should involve the 10 regions of this country. Let these 10 regions of the country assemble themselves in the north and the southwest and say, we are not going to leave this place for the next one month until the separatists and the government come to a table to settle this score. I can tell you that across the block of this nation, if I thought we are able to put just 5 million out of the 26 million persons, we are going to put this entire thing to an enemy flash. It was 4 million Togolis who went to the streets to kick out fully the single in power. The streets were dark. He came out and addressed the nation and, and pleaded that elections would be free and fair. That's how he survived. It was not the entire nation of Egypt that came out. It was a few number of youths, about two million youths, that kicked out Hosni Barak out of power. It was at least three million Burkina Bays. That's to, that Kampaore must go. We had 26 million. And not people were not up to a million. The military is not up to a million in this country. The ambas are not up to 500,000. And they are holding 22 million persons around some. We, the civilians in this country, in the territory, must be sick. I mean, sick. I mean, intensely sick to allow these few parties to keep the entire nation around some. 
Mm. Okay, um, yes, you are, your impression as far as uh, pressing for an end, because uh, seemingly we make more of declarations on media and on social media for an end, but are we actually engaged, uh, even if we were to consider the, the, the social media, no, the civil society organizations? Uh, Mr. Liu, have we mobil mobilized enough? It has been, we have been mobilizing, I want to say that, and I'm sure that any time we have the opportunity to sit on top of this platform we tell Cameroonians this thing is not an anglophone it's not anglophones from the northwest southwest who are supposed to stop it we have been calling that Cameroonians who are of good we should step to the streets because I want to say this if we come out as Cameroonians storm the streets from north south east and west because I, I heard Apostle was talking of going to the northwest they don't even need to go to the northwest we hold your dweller hostage we hold your only hostage we hold every region hostage that will be enough to push not only the government to negotiate but as well as push in the northwest the ambas to come to table mr leo we have been speaking a lot but we are not taking any action it is necessary we take action because without action we would keep on talking and nothing will change i think it is time for cameroonians to stop this talking and blame game and do what is right if we have to force the government of cameroon as well as force the diaspora as well as the amber boys to agree on talking and resolving this problem there's one way, and that way is the streets. Let Cameroonians not sit in their homes. Women, children, youths, if we can storm the streets. We are more than 20 million. I think if you want to look at youths in Cameroon, Cameroonian youth should be close to about 17 to 20 million youths. If these youths choose to take this nation hostage, I want to be sincere. There is no way that the Cameroon government will keep on. They will come to settle this issue. Because, you see, we, we claim that we are one, but when something is happening in the Northwest and Southwest, the people of Litora or the South or the North, they are living their life the way they want. But if something like this is happening and everybody takes is, take it as their personal concern, it will change the face of things. So the reason why you see the thing prolonging and nobody's in fact nobody is willing to take any step is simply because most of us Cameroonians do not want to accept that it is our problem mm -hmm. especially those of the the, the french speaking uh, 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 section of the nation it is not something that concerns them and if they come to that place where they see it as something that concerns them then we we'll change the whole thing are we not uh, also helping to polarize the nation by uh, by, by tagging uh, a part of uh, the nation? We are talking about across the board. I just I just what, said what, so, I just use that I just use that because the father yes that I just of. I just use that because if you notice very well, there are situations in which I've stepped in and they said it's a voter problem. No, it is that is where there is an issue. So, but if we could come together no, but you are, and work, you are as, highlighting it. I just highlighted. Yes, and when you highlight, when you highlight, it broadens the problem. Okay, don't that, pull that me on the highlight. Pull me on what I've been saying, which is more important, that Cameroonians should work together and make sure that they can come to the streets and close this gap that is existing right now. Robert, Robert Malangfe, uh, have, we, have we been taken hostage? Has the nation been taken hostage? Uh, uh, is the nation helpless? No, everything uh, is under control. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the issue is that um, we are faced with uh, extremist demand, mm. where someone stands only in his point and uh, does not want to move uh, a step. For instance, the government will say, "I have done this. I have done that. This is what I have done to bring change." But the separatists really they sit stand on the path of separation and they are fixed there. They have not even changed a step. I understand with my brother when he says that at time when he sits with people of the other region and he talks with them and they give uh, a response that uh, he, he, he really does not feel satisfied. 
I myself, I talk with some francophones, and the statement they always respond is that if actually the legitimate problem that uh, the Northwest and the Southwest had, if they stood by it, everybody knows the problem. The head of state accepted it that will do some changes uh, progressively. If uh, the people of the Norway and Southwest region were given this their legitimate problem at first, it would be possible. But now they, they, they are helpless. This side they are saying that they want to separate. Separatists have pick up arms. How do they come in? Are they coming to say that, okay, President probably allow them to separate and go? If they're coming to say, no, you are a brother, you cannot separate, it will be that they are supporting the government. So this is the complex situation around it. Uh, secondly, we have uh, individuals of the civil society and of the media that uh, actually their role really question if they are actually to bring peace or they have other agenda. When, um, for instance, a journalist will say uh, the way Amber is killing a policeman could be described as the way a child is playing his baby film game in the house. Those are statements that at times when we use it actually inflame it. So you realize that everybody needs to play his part. And if everybody plays his part, we'll come back to, to peace. There are people that since this crisis started for the past four years, no matter what the government has done to them, they see it as negative. They keep on insulting the government, calling the government all type of names. No matter what the government have done, anything they say, it is a, a, a painted piece, it is this, they call all names. And there are some people that they will say that, no, separation is evil, they will never ever align with them. You realize now that the common man is suffering. Because if you go deep, in Northwest and Southwest, as a common man, the villager, the first thing you tell you is not that he's interested in that separation. What you tell you is that we want peace, we are tired. And now that common man is there, it's difficult for his voice to be heard because people, uh, 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 the, the influential people of the civil society, the people of the media, the analysts, everybody already have a static site that you need to talk and say this side because if you don't say this, you will not feel free in the Northwest and Southwest region. You have your business there. If you don't say this, the government will not be okay with you. So you realize that there is this division among people. Then you also go now to elite. We have elites that actually they are standing by their people and we have elites that are actually not standing by their people like for instance you look at the effort of the parliamentarian of Kambe you know his effort that Honorable Ngala Gerard has done to ensure that there is peace in his area but you look at some other they are actually that uh, uh, that uh, Codon is not actually between the two of them to keep them uh, closer. You go at the level of chiefs. There are some chiefs that actually you don't know where they stand. They, they, because of their political stand and where they are, the relationship between them and their people have been destroyed. So we all need to come back. It is four years now. Sit, reflect as a people. We look at the damages. We look at the effect then actually we stand now as a people to really say, let us stop this war. Because at the end, it's all about stopping this war. Okay. And if we decide to stop this war, we will actually stop this war. Let us forget about those in the diaspora. Because I won't lie to you people who are viewing me at home. Those people in the diaspora, they are doing their lobbying for what they want. I even pity those that are picking on arms in the name of supporting them. Some people may actually say that I'm inflaming or their way of uh, interpreting, but I'm just telling the truth. That's some of them, they are lobbying. We know some of them, they are selling newspaper in Europe and now they have houses worth 700 million. So please, 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 let us look at the destruction. They will ask ourselves question again. Okay. Then at the end, we will have to collaborate with our government to bring peace and forget about separation. Good evening, Mr. Leon Crew. Divide and rule has worked uh, to the advantage of our politicians to the extent that they care less about the downtrodden. Before thinking of are going out on mass so we have the anglophone syndrome first that then the sardina tontina etc to fight first Derry kadu uh mifikat uh, writing from uh, uh chang mr leo good evening going out uh, in number as the panelists are uh, is the best in men i've had on that platform concerning francophones um okay uh they have a culture or cameroon uh, very the front charm is writing from Douala, please. Um, I will not encourage anything that breeds a division. I will not be a party to anything that breeds a hatred um, towards anybody. So if you write anything that insults, that 
uh, that actually is not uh, good for any other person. I won't read them. We are there for reconciliation. We are there for love. We are there for peace. I'm sure that is one of the, the, the commands God gave us or Jesus Christ gave us. So we should not think that because uh, I am on TV, I'm going to cause people to hate each other. I will cause people to divide and, and the host of others. I won't, I won't read uh, such uh, messages. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, the nation is in a transition and the response of the people will determine how fast we will make it out. I see some diaspora coming home for dialogue. I pray it comes quick for very soon. Our head of state will be okay. Our revolution is destined to be uh, blood free. As we see from the divine agenda, we have men among us who carry the solutions of, for the prosperity of the nation. Apostle Nelson Ashu writing. Okay, uh, I hear you people uh, they say step to the street. Do they come to the studio to speak without examining? Have they forgotten what happened to those who stepped to the street before? Frank uh, Bonginjo, good evening to you. Uh, this one says, um, good evening, Davidson from Moyuka. Nice topic, objective argument from Kedia, since it's not about CPDM. <laughs> As concerns Cameroon, the person who declared, okay, uh, Greetings uh, to you, Mr. Liu, and all the panelists. I want to agree with Prof. Mark that the crisis can be solved by mass demonstration in the economic and political capitals. Remember, the Vietnam War ended uh, due to demonstrations in the USA, which made the American government withdraw its troops from Vietnam. Collins, writing from Upstation in uh, Bermuda. Um, this one reads, uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Edwin from Utengene. I just want Africans uh, should be very careful with the return of Gbagbo. He's out to keep a pushing the French ideology in Africa, something Africans are trying to run away from. Uh, good evening to you from Mutengene. Uh, Apostle Ambi, I really admire the way you put your talks. You are so intelligent and interesting to listen to Luther. He's writing from Limbe. Uh, I believe Gbagbo is real. Likewise, Watara but Cameroon should stand up and take this challenge. These leaders practically have been and are still mindful of the people under them. But in Cameroon, uh, the president has never stood for his country and is really okay. Uh, good evening to you, my brother. Uh, good evening to you in the studio. The reunion between Watara and Babu is a step forward which other African presidents should copy because uh, some do not even want to see their opponents, which is really poor, because politics is evolving with time. Terence is writing from Mutengene. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo and co on this uh, great program. The way forward in Africa is to lead all the masses believed on what uh, they want right down to the common man, just as Arabs are updated on their geopolitical situations not one person dictating on uh, what a million should do. Secondly, let Africans build an African uh, armed forces, okay? I'm watching from Muteng, and a good evening to you. Uh, Mr. Liu, this issue is very complicating. When France is concerned, for my own opinion, this starts a problem I've recourse uh, for things to be okay. All the actors and actresses put together and no divorce, and she takes uh, care for the female gender, then we could be seeing reconciliation. All this is fake. And you're writing from Boya, Dr. Um, Ingonyam, how do we get all the forces across? Um, tomorrow, there's going to be a convention by women in, uh, in Yaoundé, women from all 10 regions of Cameroon are converging on Yaoundé tomorrow for a peace conference. Do we need a broad base? Um, coalition force, political parties, almost everybody to work and discuss towards a peace and an end to the crisis. Yes, it's very important that all Cameroonians, uh, young and old, should be thinking about peace, not violence and war. Um, and whatever you can do, do in your in your, where you are, do the best you can where you are with what you have you know, to, 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 to obtain peace. So the women are meeting is a good example. 
other women elsewhere should be meeting, men, men should be meeting, everybody should be meeting and talking. The peace agenda is very, very important. But like, uh, like Mark, was, Mark and uh, Apostle Ambe were saying, that people should storm the street. You're not, you're not going to see it happen. It will not happen. Even if that's, if that's we thought that's how it's going to work, it will never happen in the next 50 years. Why am I saying so? Because, you know, what is it that motivates people? If you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the thing that motivates people to do what they are doing. Why should someone just lay his life out there just for you? For, you know, the way we are, we are brought up differently, and why the, why the Anglophone citizen is thinking differently, the Francophone citizen thinks differently, and you think the Francophone citizen is going to sacrifice his life for you, you are wasting your time. It's not going to happen. So, but... There's no need even to be saying, oh, let's just generate this pressure so that President Pobia can do it. No, he's going to do it. There's going to be dialogue. There's going to be reconciliation and there's unity, and there's no need for all of that. It's going to happen sooner than later. Thank you. Many people are still waiting for the white smoke from the crystal ball. I keep watching my lips. <laughs> Distance is not a barrier. No. When you, the, 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 point, the point that we, we, are, we, are, we are missing out on is um, we... we, we like, like you and I, you know, you know my crystal ball. You have seen it before. Mm -hmm. And Kedia, uh, I'm sitting here. I can read the writing on the wall, but Kedia can't. You know, <laughs> I can see the thing written. So, so it's no problem. Yes. yes. How do we bring uh, uh, people across the border in Cameroon to force everybody? Because you see, many persons have been taken hostage, eh? and we cannot explain that. How do we put an end to that? Mr. Leo, this thing has to do with uh, a good will. Okay. Yes, I think we do not first of all have the will as a people. The will is not there. There's a lot of justifications. Too much, too much justification, both from the side of the government and even the masses. Mm -hmm. And with this, it stands as a war and it stands as a barrier for other things to manifest. I'm asking that, how do you explain that other countries can see peace brokers in our country and we have not seen them? How do you explain that a country as big as Zimbabwe with two political rivals, Morgan Van Girai and Mugabe, a Cameroonian is selected by the AU to go and broker peace there. He goes there and he succeeds. Then in our own house, we are looking towards the international community. We are looking community. towards the international community mm. to come and solve a problem that we have somebody that has solved like similar problem in another country. It tells us there's no will. With the ideas we pour forth every day from TV platforms, are you telling us that if the will was there, they wouldn't have even at least stolen these ideas to engage for a peace process? The national dialogue came. A lot of Cameroonians who did not go to national level wrote proposals. Are you telling me that within 26 million persons, not up to 1 million people are able to provide solutions to a problem we are going through? I'm asking which international community came to help Kagame as a single person to solve the Rwandan crisis. The will is not there because from every facet in this nation, solutions have been proposed to this problem that if at all we had even managed to engage the least of them would have covered a very great mile as far as this challenge is concerned. The will is not there. The government does not have the will. The government has a particular philosophy that they have maintained that every, it says, somebody said, if you tie a pigeon on a piece of rope, on a piece of wood, and the pigeon struggles to fly for so many years, and it doesn't go, the day you untie that pigeon, it will not fly again, because subconsciously, the pigeon knows that it has been tied. This government has at their subconsciousness that guns will solve the problem so every other thing you are bringing right now it's like that pigeon that even though they have untied the leg it has refused to fly because in the mind he knows that he's still tied so the greatest captivity is not in chains where your hands are tied mental it's mental captivity. captivity and i'm sure our state is going through a mental turbulence mental captivity to have believed that they will use an iron fist to solve this problem it is a mistake of monumental proportion i think they should be neutral and be flexible be open to ideas they have their own dialogue they have their own approach no matter how many ideas come from which angles i have also on this platform asked that are we the first country to go through such a challenge no 
Liberia and Sierra Leone civil war started in 1991 when Prime Minister Milton Mugai was killed. His brother Abe Mugai took power. That crisis ran from 1991 to 2002, 11 years. 11 years. When United Nations went there and failed, it was Britain that decided to come because we wanted to give them independence in 1961. They came there to solve the crisis. I'm asking that we don't know the crisis in Liberia. When Nigeria sent Okomo soldiers to go and fight in Liberia, we don't know the crisis in Mozambique, we don't see the crisis in Sudan. Can't we learn from all these crises and draw inspiration from them and solve our own problem? Do we need some helicopters or some aircraft to fly from New York with UN emblems on it to come and tell us that the UN, the AU, the UN is made of human beings, blacks and white. Those blacks and whites are in this country. One of the blacks is this man sitting here, Apostle Amiva Nadengwa. Another black is Dr. Nick sitting there. Another black is Professor Mark Anthony. Another black is Kedia. Another black is Toon for Nico Halle. Another black are many Cameroonians who can sit down and solve this problem. I don't see this thing being above us. The will is not there. Why don't we give 1,000 solutions? The English man says, when there is a will, yes, there is will. a way. Mm -hmm. And if there is no will, no matter how much way or how many ways you put, it will not go. So our major challenge here in Cameroon is not the absence of a way out of the crisis. But the will should be the on both sides of now. The will. It should be on both sides. That's what I'm talking. The will on the separatists and the will on the... The separatists find everything wrong. The government also finds its own way. That's why I say both sides, there is no mm. will. Mm. Um, uh, we don't have the will. We don't have the will. There is no will. Has, but we have ways. So. He has seen the crystal ball. He has a crystal ball, and he has seen. There's the a way I've seen the crystal ball. It's coming soon. <laughs> okay. Um, there yeah. is a will. There's a will. We had ways along. There's a time for everything. Doctor Nick, we had ways along out yeah, of this crisis. There, 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 there is no a, will. There is a time for everything, and the time is the now. People are dying now. Uh, Professor Mark Antony. Uh, now, what should people be doing he says that there should be will on the side of the government there should be will on the side of the separatists um should the people just surrender their faith to the government till when the government would think that okay i will, I will discuss oh see when the separatists would, would uh think it's time it's also time for them to, to drop the guns that is not what i'm going to accept because sitting and claiming that might be you are waiting for the government to solve the problem or waiting that the amber boys will drop their guns and accept or come to solve the problem there are war merchants, it's, eh? it's like giving away your own life mm. that is something that as an individual tell every Cameroonians we must be the first people to choose to solve the problem I heard uh, Apostle Ambe talking of a real problem which is true we are the persons who are supposed to develop that we are mean every Cameroonian per se is supposed to develop that desire to see this problem solved because when we have that real power empowered each one of us will believe that we are the sovereign people of this nation because I want to make this clear that when we talk of the government the government doesn't fall from heaven the government is coming from among the people mm -hmm. the government only exists because of the social contract that existed between the people and the government through that election box so if we realize that these people whom we have given them our sovereign will and power are unable to solve the problems which are actually affecting us then we must do something I've been hearing dr. Nick talking about uh, the people's problem we always quote the youth which is food basically economic problems which is very very true it's an economic problem but the truth is that every one of us is gifted with enough that we can transform our own situation mm -hmm. and forget this issue it is not the government that needs to give you jobs it's neither the government that needs to give you what to eat as an individual you can generate what it takes to sustain yourself as well as maintain a state of peace around your environment and so if we do not begin as individuals we will end up not having it because we are expecting it, expecting it from somewhere mm -hmm. so it must begin with us as and if the political will is not there like he's saying it means we are into this for the next 50 for the years. next 50 years mm -hmm. so it must begin with each one of us if we accept the responsibility then at the end of the day 
it will affect one another and before we know we will choose a government that will be able to solve the problem let's we are talking we are moving towards elections by 2025 there's going to be a presidential election again if we sit here and we are only talking okay the government must have a will uh, uh the amber boys must have the will at the end of the day we'll be killed all of us will die people will be making billions. and so mr Liu, i think mm. that each Cambodian needs to take that responsibility mm. to become a peace crusader in his <clears> own <throat> environment mm. we must decide as individuals to say okay we want this problem to be solved i play my part you play your part each person plays their part at the end of the day the government will have a reason to join us mm. as well as the ambassadors who have a, a reason to join us and before we know the problem would have gone off the table okay uh, how do we change the strategy four five years is, things are not uh, working do you think there's need for those um, who are expected to show the political will to change strategy so that at least the people can have some peace yes that's why my first round when i was talking i said it's time for us to look at it is five years we need to sit and reflect and look for the way forward we have seen other uh, battles that has to do with separation how many years they took and uh, we've seen their effect in the ground so it's time for us to really sit and think again and look at the definition of uh, goodwill because uh, everybody has his own definition of goodwill and his own way of looking out of goodwill some will, will analyze and some will say this government has no goodwill but actually me i don't see it in that perspective maybe we have two different definition of, of goodwill because i remember the people coming up telling the government that they want inclusive dialogue when we talk about inclusive it means everybody should be brought in eh? They mean federal, they mean federalists, yes. they mean uh, uh, those for unitary system, everybody by themselves, that's the mean of inclusive. Everybody must be there. That is what I heard the people talking on TV, asking for inclusive dialogue. And the government gave inclusive dialogue. Some people come further to say uh, they don't want inclusive, they don't want inclusive dialogue. They want, uh, please let him talk more. God. That's why I said that we, the honesty is not even there. Some people think they have monopoly of over what is right. You are not being honest. And what is there. Okay, are you, you are honest. Very honest. That's the problem. You are very honest. I am not honest. Not this honest. one is honest. The other one is not honest. not honest. This is four years. We are here. That's You're the not, problem. That's why I said that we should sit and reflect and know what is going on. If actually we are sitting here today, maybe I thought that as us analyzing people will be talking about the dialogue and the outcome of the dialogue how to implement it but when i hear people see it there was no dialogue it simply means that there are people that have taken stand eh? mm -hmm. then no matter what the government says they don't care if i am sitting here with intellectuals and they are talking about the fact that there was no dialogue i ask myself question what we should be talking about is implementation and the process of implementing it that's what we should be paying but when we say there was no dialogue it means that we've taken a stand and that's why we are here this is four years this is five years going this is the same thing people say militarize the demilitarize the zone the government did it they brought back military out of the zone the number that is there, they are just few for internal security. Now they are killing them. Very soon when they send back military, people come back, say demilitarize the room. They will see say the government is doing nothing. Everything the government does, nothing. Are we aware that in this country today, as we are talking, the general examination, for instance, for ENAM, we have 50 magistrates and 30 court registered just for Anglophone before the general concours that will come for Cameroonia, which Anglophone will still write those one you don't see there's nothing the government have done nothing 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 now let us say the government has done nothing at least what the government have done is cosmetic these separatist fighters what step have they done we have people that are struggling in the background in the civil society we have people like for instance honorable francis he has struggled to make a background dialogue in ghana that at least people should come and let's discuss. If it is not authorized in Cameroon, let's sit in Ghana and discuss. What did the separatists say? That no, they cannot come in Ghana. That if any country in Africa, there will, there will be a plot to bring back people in country. Making a dialogue in Europe, America, you can't guarantee those in Cameroon to be part of it. 
anything step that is done, they frustrate it. And people see them to be honest. People see the government to be dishonest. This is four years. We are going to five years, and that's how the time is going. When us will see to rethink again as human beings to look for the way forward, then we'll get the solution. But if we keep saying that everybody is wrong, if somebody from the government brings you just because you have a perspective that that person is from the CPDM, that person is from the government, everything the person is saying is wrong. Then even when those those separatist fighters, there are people that sit on radio, TV, and everywhere, they are even scared to condemn the separatist fighters because they even fear their investment in the Northwest and Southwest, and they're not deep inside them. But they will not say that, no, they are wrong. But they will support them. I know many people that sit they always say, no, the government must dialogue with them just because they know that if you condemn if what they are wrong doing, they will not feel free to go to the Northwest uh, and to stroll and come back. We'll be here. Let us keep condemning each other. This is four years, five years is going, time is going. Well, we will learn to say that, hey, this is where these guys are on their limit. They don't want to. At least, if these guys could have said that, okay, fine. Let us move one step further to say that, fine. Let's talk of federalism. They don't. They are there. Come to Ghana for dialogue. No, Ghana is very bad. They want to get us to the country. Do this, do this, do this. There are efforts that have been really done behind. Members of government and members of those CPDM that people come, they insult, effort have been doing. But the guys stand on the same place, they don't move. The government must yield to their own, they are dictators, the government must follow them. People will get, because they are afraid, they will support them. They are not, they must discuss with them, they must discuss with them. Are we aware, viewers, we know that they are, they are diaspora, they are good heart, eh? Even those that are separatists, we know those that are ready for dialogue. Eh? And we know those that are looking for legitimacy, that if the government called them today to discuss with them, it will give them legitimacy for those other countries and NGOs that have asked them to show, bring legitimacy so that they will support their own arms. The government knows that. So you are calling for dialogue. The government has already calculated A, B, C, and D. And know the agenda of some of them. There are those of them that we know that will call them, they'll come, they'll dialogue with good um, And we have those that have agenda. No, why, why, so why, we should why, be honest. Why, why is it uh, difficult? It is true. Uh, many persons are vexed by what is happening on both sides. But um, this whole issue of forgiveness, why is it difficult for people to forgive? Uh, thank you very much. Before I answer that question, I just want to call the attention of the public that is listening to us because when you listen to someone like Kadia talk, nobody shout and then this, they shout a lot and raise a lot of emotions and uh, you can't see clearly in what they are saying. Now, let me, <laughs> you see I'm very quiet just because uh, I want us to get something very clearly. This war would have stopped a long time ago except for two things that have happened between 2019 and today. The first thing, when KDI is talking, you say, oh, this one implementing this, implementing this. You cannot implement something from something that fails. I said before, without chewing my words, that the major national dialogue was a failure. So you cannot implement something from a failure and expect it to work. That is the bottom line. So why is it that we don't have peace? And why is it that there's still a lot of um, violence going on and things don't seem to be working? Two things. The major national dialogue, if it was, a, it, was a, it was true and good, and if it had followed the principles of a dialogue, the problem would have been solved. But it did not. That thing, I was there. It was cooked up. So, it did, so you can is talking, he's just making noise. <laughs> now listen. So we are going to have a new dialogue that will replace that one and it will be true and good, and that's when the problem will be solved. The second thing, we might have gone some steps by now, but this COVID came accompanied by the COVID gate, making, adding insult to injury. So those two things, that's why we are still suffering. And then when you hear people talking, the government has done this, done this, this magistrate, 50, 20, 10, that is not a problem. To be able to solve problems, and we, when we'll be going to this dialogue, listen very carefully. If you, if you find people like Kedia, they bring you a list of 20 things, look at them very carefully. The government has done this, one, two, three teachers, bilingual teachers, all of that is nothing. Look for, use principles. I have said it before, you have to think of Parota's rule, it's the 80-20 rule. We'll, let, us, let, us, let me frame the question. We'll be going to a dialogue, might be in this country, might be in another country, wherever. Cameroonians should ask the question, everybody must ask the question. What is that one thing? If we were to go into the, we, there, there are so many things to, to, to discuss at the dialogue. But 
what is that one item that we should put on the agenda that if we discuss that one item and get it right 80 percent of our problems will be solved that is the issue it's not magistrates and all this noise it's method. confederation don't, don't let me just, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to Kamuyas, please don't distract me oh, please, please 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 enough with the noise it's about the form of state it's very important that Cameroonians discuss the form of state. And once we agree on the acceptable form of state, then Cameroon, the, the problems in Cameroon will be solved. Everything else would fall in place. And a lot of things would get corrected. That is what will happen, and that's what should happen. And it will be the form of state that would solve the problem. Thank you. Uh, okay. Mr. Lega, please, uh, 30 seconds. The problem is that when we say the government have done nothing, we insult everything the government have done and say it is nothing. Then the separate is that they are there, they are in the diaspora, they have not made any simple compromise here. Eh? They have not stand and they are there, they even kill their own people that they are defending eh? We don't talk anything about them. We, we keep them, we protect them, we don't condemn them. Exactly, but we yeah. are there saying that the government no, do not do exactly. It is not is correct. It the we should be the able to solve okay, okay, the okay. 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 The okay. Of the it. Right. Do so those separatists are free right. to do what they like. They are not free to do everything, but we have a problem to solve and it must be solved. Yeah, but... Yeah, ask your question, I'm listening. No, no, you've spoken already. All right, thank you. He spoke after you. Let me say something to Kedia. Before is it a, a, a no. ping pong? No, 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 no. I just want to say, yes. Kedia, I just want to say the problem is not an issue of uh, the Amber Boys. The problem is Camonians and the government. They are looking at what needs to be done for them, not what the people whom they did not elect are doing. So we can't misplace priorities. I think we should hold that. Are you saying that? Are you saying that if Amber Boys were to kill six persons, we should, it, 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 it is difficult to stop them. No, but should nothing. Should something should be done. Something should be said, but yeah, it's difficult to stop that. Okay, uh, that's uh, what we are saying. Uh, yeah, uh, Apostle Ambi, um, how do we get everybody on the table? Let's finish. The women are meeting tomorrow. After the women, they are going to be in only for three days. Do we need a men's convention after that? Uh, politicians' convention. Uh, uh, women are politicians. Men are politicians. Mm -hmm. We just have three class of persons. We have the youths, mm. the men, and the women. If the youths meet, the men meet, the women meet, I'm sure these three gatherings have the capacity to decide on what will happen in this country. If the youths gather in their numbers, the men gather in their numbers, the women gather in their numbers, they sit down and deliberate and come with proposals to the government and to the separatists. Mm -hmm. on condition that if they refuse the proverb that my father told me some years ago shall be fulfilled that if a man cooks for the community the community will eat and ask for more but if the community cooks for a man you won't be able to finish it <laughs> if all the women in this country and the men and the youths put together decide to cook for this government and the separatists they will create a nation somewhere around bangladesh to go and settle <laughs> it is because the will of the people have not yet been taken into serious consideration i pray to men guy like this they gather with the decision to gather effectively and i'm praying that men also should take the same lead and gather all this dialogue we are talking here that dialogue has no future because a lot of greed selfishness personal interest is tied to these dialogues and if at all the masses who want to change things in this country let the women of the ten regions the men and the youth decide to cook for this government and for the separatists okay once they will serve them what they have cooked then they will know that you cannot eat what a community gives you and still survive. Okay. Uh, Peter Key says that uh, Liu is La Republic agent. Peter Key, I am <laughs> really... Yeah, he's not, he's not alone. I, I read it because uh, many persons say so. Peter Key, just to tell you that I am not recruited by uh, Ambazonia to 
run their propaganda. Neither am I uh, recruited mm -hmm. by anybody mm -hmm. to run their propaganda. I am a journalist who is objective, which means that mm -hmm. if people mm -hmm. talk about the government, they should also talk about the separatists. True. That is my role. I am, I am, I am, I was trained yeah, to right. be objective. I am on nobody's side. If you think that I will run a program that heals everything that the separatists do and uh, lambast everything that the government does, please, I will not be fulfilling uh, my responsibilities as an objective uh, journalist. And I will never do that type of journalism just to please persons like um, Peter Key. You, yes, your insult and whatsoever will not change uh, what I do, but I only pray and tell you that I love you, I will not hate you back, and all of you will say uh, similar things. We just pray for peace, um, and I will continue doing my job. That's all. I want to thank you, Dr. Nick, for coming. Thank you very much, and uh, again, our listeners, uh, keep the faith, keep the hope. There's going to be, in the days ahead, there's going to be a genuine and true dialogue to which Robert Kedia will be invited and many other people and will be discussing the form of state. After that, there will be reconciliation and unity in the nation. Thank you. We'll be able to solve our political problems, economic problems, development problems, and we'll change our education. And that will put money in the pockets of the youths. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Cameroonians. It's always a joy to be here. Good night, everybody, and stay safe. Okay. Thank you, too, for coming. Thank uh, you, Leo, for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the Camonians who are watching at us, we say thank you for giving us your ears. Thank you to my fellow panelists for being there with us to discuss. Okay. And, uh, Kedia, thank you for uh, coming. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I want to tell the British fighter that I will keep on condemning them. I know other people are scared to condemn them because maybe they are scared to go to the Norway and South, but I'm here and I'll keep on condemning them whether they like it or not. I want to thank you, Mr. Akum Leonard, for inviting me and most importantly, uh, the head of state that through uh, <laughs> Professor Boyomo had to send me here to represent the CPGM party. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, I want to thank you all who took time off to watch uh, the mm -hmm. program. Thank you very much for all the comments on uh, social media. I'm reading uh, all of them and very encouraged by what you you see. And uh, to you, Desmond and Eli and uh, Bertrand and Noel, and not forgetting you, Tabi Tambe Bryant, who is doing and supervising what we are doing here. If you think it's easy to do journalism in Cameroon, please just come and sit here for one day. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.